<laughs> Ever wondered how the brave souls of the Wild West maintain their hygiene in the midst of dust storms, outlaw trails, and the untamed frontier? Well, hold on to your hats, because today, we're unraveling 10 mind-blowing hygiene practices from the wild. The legendary Captain James West. <laughs> and I finally got him all to myself. Number 10. People went to the bathroom in outhouses that smelled horrid. When we picture the Wild West, our minds often conjure up images of cowboys and saloons. But amidst the dust and tumbleweeds, hygiene took a back seat. In a time when the luxury of modern toilets was still a distant dream, the norm was outhouses. Those outdoor sheds covering holes in the ground. It wasn't a picturesque scene, rather. It was a concoction of pungent odors, swarming bugs, and an absence of toilet paper that defined the era. Believe it or not, the introduction of this bathroom essential to the Western world didn't occur until the mid-1800s. Leaves, corn cobs, or grass became makeshift substitutes for the absent toilet paper, creating less than ideal conditions. The overpowering smell emanating from these outhouses can make your stomach churn, and standing nearby was not for the faint of heart. Outhouses were an integral part of frontier life, though some preferred the more natural setting of the woods for their bathroom needs. Built near houses and homesteads for convenience and safety, the construction involved digging a hole and erecting a wooden structure above it. Once the hole was full, a simple cover-up ensued, and the wooden structure was moved over another hole, usually dug nearby. The unpleasant odor wasn't easily ignored, prompting people to resort to measures like using lye or lime to mask it. Bugs, especially flies and menacing black widow spiders, were commonplace, with the latter posing a biting threat as individuals sat down on the wooden seat. Before the advent of indoor plumbing, chamber pots, small porcelain bowls with lids and handles found their place near the bed for nocturnal needs. However, venturing outdoors, pioneers constructed outhouses, simple shacks with a pit dug out underneath. These structures, a part of American history since the 1700s, featured one or two holes carved into the seat, one for adults and a smaller one for children. The crescent moon or starburst carved into the door not only provided light, but also much needed ventilation. As True West Magazine reports, during the 1800s, it seemed that just about every hotel, house, saloon, and store in the Wild West had a privy in the back. Some of these discreet yet popular places were even two stories tall, showcasing the bustling nature of these facilities. Legends of America notes a hotel in Montana with an outhouse boasting a dozen seats. Similar to our modern bathrooms, these outhouses offered a semblance of privacy, perhaps a spot to read, enjoy a smoke, or even indulge in a nip of liquor, as per the Missouri Folklore Society. Interestingly, they also doubled as trash pits, sometimes holding discarded weapons or tools used in crimes. Number 9. Lard Soap, Whiskey, and Pencils The Unconventional Hair Care of the Wild West Ah, the luxury of washing your hair and reveling in that amazing scent, something the people of the Wild West might not have fully appreciated. In an era where ruggedness prevailed, both men and women resorted to unconventional methods for their hair care routines. Picture this, a scentless bar of soap from lard and lye. Fragrance? None. Practicality? Absolutely. This was the go-to shampoo substitute for the inhabitants of the wild, wild west. It wasn't about a bouquet of scents, but the sheer functionality of lard and lye soap bars. And if that doesn't intrigue you enough, here's where it gets wild. Some individuals dared to venture into the realm of hair care cocktails, mixing whiskey with castor oil to cleanse and condition their tresses. Can you imagine the audacity of such a concoction? Hair care in the Wild West wasn't a pampering session with fragrant shampoos. It was a journey into the unconventional. The daring ones among them opted for a wild hair care cocktail, combining the rough edges of whiskey with the soothing properties of castor oil. A hair care routine like no other indeed. But the adventure doesn't end there. Styling hair in the wild, Wild West, was a whole different ballgame. Say goodbye to modern hair curlers. Women of the era embraced the simplicity of heated pencils, Yes, you heard it right, pencils. They would wrap their locks around a heated pencil, hoping for those perfect curls that defined the fashion of the time. 
So while we revel in the choices of shampoos and conditioners today, let's take a moment to appreciate the untamed spirit of the Wild West, where lard soap, whiskey, and heated pencils were the stars of the hair care show. Number eight, communal towels were used to wipe off beer foam. Step into the Wild West saloons and you'll find a scene quite different from the polished bars we know today. Picture this, no seats, just rails where you could kick back and put your feet up. These rustic establishments had a peculiar feature, towels hanging from hooks along the rails. But these were no ordinary towels. They served a distinct purpose in an era where hygiene took a back seat. The towels weren't there for mere decoration. They were communal tools for wiping off the beer foam that clung to the beards and mouths of the patrons. In a time when cleanliness was a rare luxury, these towels became the unsung heroes of the saloon experience. Unfortunately, their role in maintaining hygiene was far from admirable. The communal towels used by men to mop up the beer foam from their beards and mouths were far from sanitary. In fact, they were rarely washed. The lively atmosphere of these saloons, fueled by the flow of booze and raucous adventures, concealed a grim reality. The excess beer foam, shared among countless patrons, created a breeding ground for germs and bacteria on these communal towels. Imagine the scene, drinking buddies leaning on rails, wiping off beer foam with the same towel. The term community towels takes on a whole new meaning in this context. It wasn't just about shared experiences. It was about sharing afflictions, cold, flu, or even tuberculosis. The Wild West saloons, lacking stools but featuring rails for leaning and spittoons, were a hub of social interaction, both welcome and unwelcome. Now, let's delve into the concoction served at these rustic saloons. Rotgut liquor, a notorious blend of poor quality random liquors was the beverage of choice. The very name suggests its less than appetizing nature, making it no surprise that it could make patrons sick after consumption. Yet, the adventure seekers of the Wild West continued to indulge in these makeshift saloons. As if the questionable liquor wasn't enough, the seemingly harmless towels hanging from the bar rails added an extra layer of filth to the experience. Patrons, unaware of the microbial haven in those towels, used them casually to wipe away the remnants of their beer-soaked beards. The Old West saloons may have been a setting for wild tales and spirited revelry, but beneath the surface lurked a truth that might make your skin crawl. Number 7. Even a minor scratch could be deadly. In the heart of Deadwood, South Dakota, archaeologists stumbled upon a pair of tweezers in 2005, unraveling a unique aspect of hygiene in the Wild West. These weren't just any tweezers, they were believed to have served a dual purpose, facial hair removal and the delicate art of opium smoking among the Chinese residents of Deadwood. For the Chinese population in Deadwood, tweezing facial hair was a daily ritual, showcasing the diverse practices that coexisted in the Wild West. However, beneath the surface of daily life in this frontier town lurked a more ominous reality, one where even a minor scratch could spell danger. In an era predating the widespread use of antiseptics, life on the trail was fraught with peril. Unsanitary conditions among settlers meant that the smallest cut or abrasion could escalate into a skin infection at best and a potentially lethal disease at worst. The lack of antibiotics, a medical marvel introduced less than a century ago, meant that seemingly trivial infections can turn fatal. Consider the harsh realities faced by pioneers. Cholera, a dreaded disease, could wreak havoc on the trail. Without the safeguard of antibiotics, patients face dire consequences from infections that, today, might be considered relatively trivial. Serious infections, such as those affecting the heart valves, often proved fatal. Others, like tuberculosis, were a relentless adversary, claiming lives and leaving survivors with ongoing chronic infections that gradually eroded the body over years. While antibiotics revolutionized medicine, the Wild West era serves as a reminder that the battle against infectious diseases has not been without challenges. In the modern world, we confront a new dilemma, antimicrobial resistance. Antibiotics, once hailed as miracle drugs, are losing their effectiveness against certain bacteria, giving rise to the ominous specter of superbugs. In the unforgiving terrain of the Wild West, health hazards extended beyond diseases weaving a tapestry of challenges for its resilient inhabitants. Cowboys, synonymous with the frontier spirit, 
grappled not only with the rugged landscape, but also with common fungal infections that plagued their unrelenting lifestyle. Cowboys, spending months on end in the same clothes and enduring prolonged hours on horseback without proper baths, became breeding grounds for fungal infections. The symptoms manifested across their bodies, particularly in areas like the buttocks, armpits, and feet, including irritation and relentless itching. The unsanitary conditions prevalent in the Wild West facilitated the spread of bacteria as cowboys, scarred and affected, transferred the microbes through contact with their hands and various surfaces. Diseases, too, found fertile ground in the settlements of the American frontier due to these precarious hygiene conditions. Among the most formidable adversaries was cholera, a scourge that spared neither settlers nor Native Americans. Sarah Raymond Herndon, upon arriving at a camp, expressed relief at the absence of disease, stating, There is no disease at all in the camp. It is wonderful how well we are doing. I hope it continues that way. The struggles of the Wild West were not confined to external threats. The very fabric of daily life, marked by inadequate hygiene practices, contributed to the challenges faced by its inhabitants. As cowboys traversed the vast expanses, their health battles mirrored the harshness of the frontier. Number 6. Dust was everywhere. In the vast expanse of the Wild West, the winds of the western desert land stirred up more than just tales of cowboys and frontier adventures. They brought with them an unrelenting onslaught of dust. As iconic as the tumbleweeds that roll across the cinematic landscapes, the dust of the Wild West presented a formidable challenge for frontiersmen attempting to maintain even a semblance of cleanliness. The cinematic portrayal of dust-laden landscapes in Western movies merely scratches the surface of the gritty reality faced by those who ventured across the Western frontier. Sarah Atherton and her family journeyed through this harsh terrain, experienced the pervasive nature of dust. Mary Ellen Jones's account in Daily Life of the 19th Century American Frontier vividly describes Sarah's struggle, with the dust omnipresent and her sunbonnet offering meager defense against the relentless sun. Dust in the Wild West wasn't a mere inconvenience. It was an ever-present adversary. Dust storms fueled by strong winds could invade homes, posing a threat to both the comfort of settlers and the well-being of their livestock. Sarah Raymond Herndon, who traversed from Missouri to the Montana Territory in the late 1860s, recounts the ordeal. Oh, the dust, the dust, it is terrible. The intensity of the dust was such that after a 20-mile journey, faces were obscured revealing only apertures for eyes, nose, and mouth through the thick layer of grime. In the 1800s, dust storms were commonplace in the American West, leaving an indelible mark on the journals and diaries of many settlers. The abrasive dust not only caused discomfort, but also had health implications, leading to redness of the eyes and breathing difficulties. The severity of these storms occasionally reached extremes, resulting in the demise of livestock. Even within the supposed sanctuaries of homes, dust found a way to infiltrate, turning domestic spaces into battlegrounds against the elements. The struggle against the pervasive dust became a shared experience among the settlers, prompting a collective sigh of relief when the opportunity for respite and cleansing air with clear, cold water presented itself. Number 5. Public Bathhouses In an era where the expansive landscapes of the Wild West echoed with the hoofbeats of settlers and the creaking of wagon wheels, Maintaining personal hygiene posed a formidable challenge. Today, with the luxury of modern amenities like clean and hot running water, we might take the simplicity of a shower or bath for granted. However, in the 1800s, cleanliness, especially on the frontier, was a time-consuming and often arduous endeavor. For many pioneers, the closest thing to a bath was a refreshing dip in a nearby river or pond, weather permitting. Sponge baths from metal or porcelain basins became the alternative when natural bodies of water weren't available. Yet, there were those who seldom engaged in such cleaning rituals. Early homesteaders, lacking the convenience of wells and iron hand pumps until the late 1870s, resorted to carrying water from streams or ponds. The resourcefulness of some led them to bathe in horse troughs, disregarding the fact that these served as watering holes for their farm animals. As the need for more regular baths became apparent, the 1850s saw the emergence of three types of public baths. Common bathhouses with private tubs became a notable option, as evidenced by historical records from California in 1858. 
Public bath proprietors pay $2 for water. Public bath proprietors pay $2 for water per tub, and there are indications that the water might have been reused. An intriguing snippet from an 1863 article in a Nevada newspaper sheds light on the cost of slumber during a bath, revealing that a bather who unintentionally dozed off for five and a half hours was charged $5.50, equivalent to a dollar per hour. In the bustling heart of bigger cities in the Wild West, hygiene practices took a turn towards luxury and innovation. The allure of Turkish baths captured the imaginations of city dwellers, and an 1870 guide titled Personal Beauty, How to Cultivate and Preserve It, extolled the virtues of Turkish baths, not dissimilar to today's saunas. These baths were not only seen as a means of physical cleansing, but were also recommended for health and weight loss. The trend gained momentum, leading to the establishment of more bathing houses. In 1890, entrepreneur James Lick opened a luxurious bathhouse in San Francisco, which remained in operation until 1919, according to the San Francisco Business Times. These urban sanctuaries provided respite from the challenges of frontier life, offering a space for relaxation and rejuvenation. A surprising contributor to the bathing landscape of the Wild West was the presence of brothels. Chronicled in Good Time Girls of the Rocky Mountains, many of these establishments boasted private or shared bathrooms. Customers can indulge in services while immersed in the soothing waters of a tub. At the turn of the century, the Oasis, a parlor house in Idaho, set a luxurious precedent by charging between $50 and $80 for a bubble bath. The significance of hygiene also underwent a pivotal shift during the Civil War. In 1861, the U.S. Sanitary Commission was established as a relief agency to aid wounded soldiers. This marked a turning point in sanitation practices, as it was discovered that simple measures such as washing patients, their clothes, and the walls of their rooms could dramatically decrease the spread of disease. This newfound awareness of the connection between hygiene and health permeated civilian life as well. The evolving trends in hygiene were accompanied by a surge in hygiene products flooding the marketplace. Soaps, shampoos, perfumes, laundry detergents, and mouth and teeth cleansers became increasingly available, transforming not only personal care routines, but also the hygiene landscape of the Wild West. Number 4. Battling Lice and Hair Hygiene Havoc in the Old West In a time when the phrase bad hair day took on a whole new meaning, the denizens of the Old West faced a unique set of challenges when it came to maintaining their locks. Imagine a world without the convenience of fresh water, indoor plumbing, or readily available bathtubs. How did these pioneers keep their hair presentable? You might wonder. Elena Sandage suggests that frequent brushing was the go-to strategy between washes. With no shampoo in sight, inventive pioneers resorted to household items like eggs, vinegar, and various concoctions to cleanse their hair from the residue of harsh soaps. The advent of shampoo in 1898, initially in powder form and sourced from Germany, marked a significant leap forward. It wasn't until the early 1900s that American companies such as Brett began offering liquid shampoo. But the struggle for impeccable hair didn't end with cleaning. In 1887, the Happy Home Healthcare Guide advised washing hair whenever one bathed. However, this practice brought with it a unique set of challenges in the form of unwelcome guests. Lice. The guide outlined various types of lice that could infest both hair and body, offering remedies ranging from the application of water from boiling old potatoes to a salve of vinegar and lard. Alternatively, Pioneers resorted to the laborious task of manually picking lice from the hair using a lice comb. The battle against lice took on a new dimension as pioneers confronted not only discomfort, but also the potential for dire consequences. Scientific American warns that lice can be deadly. Researchers Howard T. Ricketts and Stanislaw J. M. von Proezen contracted typhus while studying these tiny parasites, underscoring the seriousness of the issue. The struggle expanded beyond hair hygiene to the very beds where these pioneers sought rest. Beds made of straw and hay often became infested with pests known as seam squirrels and what we recognize today as lice, infesting not just the beds but the living spaces themselves. Bugs posed a persistent threat. Rose Pender, who visited the Wild West from 1883 to 1888, recounted sleepless nights due to the abundance of bugs. The absence of window screens allowed insects to freely traverse between homes and outhouses, 
creating an unsanitary and unhygienic living environment. Number three, women were generally cleaner than men. Throughout the Wild West, maintaining personal hygiene was no small feat. The scarcity of water turned a simple act like bathing into a luxury, and some pioneers considered themselves fortunate to indulge in a wash once a week. However, amid the challenges posed by dusty winds and grime, an unexpected twist emerges in the tale of frontier cleanliness. Women emerged as the unsung heroes of hygiene. Tasked with indoor chores, women in the Wild West found themselves in a unique position. Their responsibilities granted them better access to precious water, allowing them to maintain a higher level of cleanliness compared to their male counterparts. While men faced the elements outdoors, engaging in activities like toileting that left them at the mercy of dusty winds, women navigated the battle against dirt from the relative comfort of indoor tasks. Cowboys, soldiers, and other men in the Wild West often endured long stretches without bathing punctuating their lack of cleanliness with occasional dips in local streams or rivers. This practice, more common during the hot summer months, saw a decline in the winter when the chill deterred such endeavors. In contrast, women adhered to a different routine. Daily face washing was a common practice, as described by Sarah Raymond Herndon in her accounts of mornings spent at the spring, bathed my face and hands in the cool water, picked a bouquet for the breakfast table, and returned to camp. However, the prevailing lack of privacy and societal norms limited their hygiene practices beyond this basic routine. Laundry, too, posed a unique challenge in the frontier. Cowboys and soldiers, with their nomadic lifestyles, often washed their clothes in streams or rivers when the need arose. This approach, while practical, lacked the convenience of modern laundering methods. The 1800s also brought forth distinct standards of beauty for women. Grease paint and rouge were typically associated with actresses in the theater, or women labeled as fallen. The societal idea for women was epitomized by characters like Scarlett O'Hara, who maintained a pale complexion without blemishes or freckles. Middle and upper class women went to great lengths to bleach their skin if necessary and shield themselves from the sun. Sunbonnets offered little protection against the harsh sun and wind, making it a challenging endeavor for Western pioneer women who toiled outdoors. Number two, some women resorted to skin bleaching. While today's sunbathers chase a golden tan, the women of the Wild West faced a starkly different beauty standard, one that prized pale complexions in the harsh and unforgiving frontier. Unlike the leisurely sunbathing pursuits of the modern era, the women of the Old West had no concept of a sun-soaked vacation. Instead, they toiled tirelessly under the relentless sun navigating a delicate balance between societal expectations and the practicalities of frontier life. In an era where women played pivotal roles in shaping society, their beauty standards underwent a transformation to align with the demands of the rugged cowboy way of life. The norm was to maintain a fair and porcelain-like skin tone, symbolizing a certain status and setting women apart from the sun-exposed laborers of the fields. Throughout history, the stereotype has persisted that women are more invested in their image than men. This trend held true even in the Wild West, where women engaged in less dusty and outdoor labor compared to their male counterparts were able to adhere to better hygiene practices. While men often went days without bathing, women, with their commitment to cleanliness, managed to maintain a more pleasant aroma. In pursuit of pale skin among middle and upper class women became a fashion rage. In an effort to conform to the prevailing standards of beauty, some women took extreme measures to bleach their skin, eradicating freckles and blemishes. This meticulous endeavor aimed not only at achieving a certain aesthetic, but also at establishing a visual distinction from the sunburnt field workers. In the contemporary world, the pursuit of a sun-kissed tan has become a widespread phenomenon among women, with various methods employed to achieve that coveted summer glow. However, taking a stroll back in time to the Wild West, we find a stark contrast in beauty ideals. Unlike today's sun-seeking enthusiasts, the women of the Old West actively avoided the sun, aiming to preserve their porcelain-like complexion, which was considered the epitome of beauty. The preference for fair skin in the 1800s was deeply ingrained, driven by societal standards that equated paleness with refinement and elegance. 
Women of the era went to great lengths to shield themselves from the sun, donning clothing that covered as much of their bodies as possible. This commitment to avoiding sun exposure was not merely a beauty regimen, but a reflection of the prevailing ideals of the time. As the Industrial Revolution unfolded, transforming labor practices and moving many jobs indoors, people found themselves shielded from the potentially damaging effects of the sun. This shift inadvertently contributed to the preservation of fair skin among the populace. The contemporary phenomenon of skin bleaching, aiming to lighten specific areas or achieve an overall paler skin tone, has a deep-rooted history. Tracing its origins back to ancient cultures, it gained prominence during the era of European colonialism. European colonizers, exporting their biases to the regions they enslaved, played a significant role in disseminating the idea that lighter skin was superior. One notorious preparation during this period was Venetian Cirrus, a cosmetic product based on white lead. Despite its extreme toxicity, leading to adverse effects such as swelling, skin discoloration, erosion of tooth enamel and hair loss, it remained a sought-after solution for achieving a lighter complexion. Number 1. Showering too often was deemed unhealthy. In the vast expanse of the American West, where dust and grime were the norm, an unconventional belief about bathing held sway, showering too often was deemed unhealthy. One might wonder how, with the unmistakable scent of hard work lingering, people clung to the notion that frequent bathing posed a risk to their well-being. The rationale behind this belief was as peculiar as the arid landscapes they inhabited. Surprisingly, the denizens of the Wild West harbored concerns that excessive bathing could render one vulnerable to diseases and infections. The prevailing theory suggested that frequent baths could lead to open pores, creating an alleged breeding ground for bacteria. This curious notion highlights the intriguing blend of practicality and superstition that characterized hygiene practices of the time. In addition to these peculiar beliefs, the scarcity of clean and uncontaminated water added a layer of complexity to the cleanliness conundrum. Obtaining water suitable for bathing was no easy feat, and as a result, many individuals found themselves compelled to forego regular showers. This reluctance to embrace bathing, however, came at a cost, as cowboys and settlers experienced the consequences of wearing the same clothes for days on end, falling prey to fungal infections that could have been mitigated by a more consistent approach to personal hygiene. In the American West, where modern conveniences were a rarity, outdoor showers became a pragmatic solution for those toiling in rural and backcountry areas. Cowboys, miners, and settlers, distanced from the luxury of indoor showers, ingeniously devised ways to clean themselves, turning the necessity of hygiene into a creative endeavor against the backdrop of the untamed West. In the rugged landscapes of the American West, where water sources were often scarce, Outdoor showers emerged as a practical solution for maintaining personal hygiene. These showers, typically situated near streams or water sources, embodied simplicity and functionality, reflecting the resourcefulness of those who carved out a living in remote locations. The design of these outdoor showers ranged from the rudimentary to the inventive. A garden hose or a wooden box with strategically placed water holes became the tools of cleanliness for individuals working in logging camps mining towns and farms. The user would stand under the water flowing down the hose or box, washing away the accumulated dirt and sweat from a day's labor. Despite their simplicity, these outdoor showers represented a luxury for many in these isolated areas. Settlers, devoid of indoor toilets, often found themselves compelled to bathe outside. The wives and children of these pioneers, left with no other option, embraced the outdoor showers as a means of cleanliness. In these remote locations, water was a precious commodity, making the ability to use an outdoor shower a stroke of fortune. The concept of outdoor showers dates back centuries, with an Englishman named William Feetham patenting a prototype of the hand shower in 1767. However, it wasn't until around 1860 that the French armed forces introduced the first rain showers, designed to efficiently clean a large number of people at a low cost. Showers gained further popularity in barracks, boarding schools, and prisons, offering an effective and space-saving cleaning option. The Prussian army in 1879 played a pivotal role in pushing the adoption of showers across Germany, 
installing large showers in barracks. Over the years, outdoor showers in the American West evolved, incorporating more modern materials like plastic and metal. According to NBC News, humans rank as the smelliest creatures in the animal kingdom, and the West was no exception, with the added concern of attracting disease-carrying mosquitoes. Historian Elena Sandage sheds light on the hygiene practices of the time, revealing that despite the harsh conditions, many individuals aimed to combat the notorious body odor. Daily washing rituals often involved a basin of hot water, with a focus on key areas, the face, armpits, and privates. However, not everyone had the luxury of a daily basin bath, and cowboys on the range, for instance, shared a common wash basin with just enough water to cleanse their faces and hands. For those seeking to mask their body odor, especially women, perfume became a popular choice. Toms of Maine notes that many turned to fragrances to counteract the pungent smells of frontier life. The introduction of mum deodorant in 1888 marked a significant step in the quest for odor control. This waxy cream containing zinc oxide became a staple for those eager to stay fresh in challenging environments. As the market adapted to the growing demand for outdoor fighting products, one of the earliest deodorant advertisements featured Zidonia. This mysterious solution, marketed by the Magic Novelty Company in 1893 from distant Maryland, hinted at the evolving efforts to address personal hygiene. The true breakthrough, however, came in 1903 with the introduction of the first antiperspirant aptly named Everdry, as highlighted by Smithsonian Magazine. That's it, folks. The wild, dirty truths of hygiene in the Wild West. If you found these untangling practices as fascinating as we did, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your fellow history lovers. Don't forget to hit subscribe for more fascinating tales from the past. Until next time, stay tuned.